Welcome students, welcome to this presentation on environmental economics. Innumerable changes have taken place in the world over the last 100 years. Even the last 50 years have seen tremendous amount of changes. For example, the population of the world has changed enormously from about 2.5 billion uh, pop, uh, people around 50 years ago to more than 7.5 billion people just uh, around this time. What is the outcome of this population increase? Obviously, we can see that it is the pressure that it puts on land, it puts on water, it puts on fuel, it puts on mines, it puts on uh, uh, the food that we eat. So there is an increased demand for everything because there are more mouths to feed. The second major change that we can see in the world is that of the um, exceptional uh, uh, rate at which the world economy has grown. It has grown at a compound rate of around 3.8%. What does this mean? It means that the present generation's uh, income is greater than the, uh, the previous generation's income. And uh, this increased income definitely leads to increased purchasing power. And this increased purchasing uh, power is not spent on any one kind of items alone. It is spread on consumer items varying from different kinds of food, not the staple food, but also to more diversified food, getting fruits and vegetables which do not grow locally and therefore transport costs involved or eating more of animal protein, which, need, which means more land has to be um, used for rearing livestock. Then there is uh, the need for travel, the need for consumer goods, the kind of pens and the uh, kind of day-to-day uh, -day consumer goods that are used today are very different from the goods that were used about 50 years ago. And so is the mode of transport that is being used today, the amount of uh, fuel that is needed to run these number of uh, transport. For example, the increase in tourism has resulted in the increase of uh, uh, consumption of fuel. So the increase in income has not only led to one kind of uh, uh, consumption, but it has led to a variety of goods that are in demand and to produce all these variety of uh, goods that are demanded we have to have more and more natural resources we have to use more and more of natural resources the third major change that we can see is the rapid growth in science and technology this change in science and technology has has beneficial effect to the environment as well as adverse effect. Efficiency it has increased and because newer methods of production is being employed and which also means that lesser amount of wastage occurs. This results in better utilization of resources and economic prosperity. This also means that larger quantity and larger variety of goods and better uh, uh, goods are being produced. Examples of uh, beneficial technology can be like the uh, invention of the electric car, the solar, the use of solar energy. These have helped in the conservation of um, natural resources. On the other hand, take the example of uh, co um, uh, barcodes and scanners. How does this barcode and scanner so uh, looking so innocent really adversely affect the environment? This barcode and scanner has resulted in the setting up of large retail enterprises across the globe. Billing is much easier, no doubt, but this has also led to online shopping. With online shopping, what has happened is there is an increased demand for packaging material. This packaging material is only for transporting the goods from one part of the country to the other. It is not even locally sourced. It is from different parts of the country or across the world these goods are traveling. So packaging material has resulted in increased demand of the material which are dependent on natural resources. And at the same time, once the good is received, we know that this is just going into the trash. So the amount of uh, waste that is generated by this kind of a change in the consumption pattern has done more damage to uh, people than to the environment than we can ever imagine. 
So these economic activities impact the life of the earth in many ways, not just in one way. These three changes have brought uh, changes in different ways. The if to reduce the whole story, we can just find two things that have happened. There is increased production, which needs more natural resources, and there is increased consumption, which results in more wastage of uh, resources. Now, this uh, uh, nature has got its ability to uh, consume or biodegrade the uh, waste that is produced. But then the way the uh, complex economic systems are working is beyond the capacity of the environment to actually do its function of acting like uh, a sink and absorbing the waste that we generate. So this kind of uh, 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 adverse effect on environment is something that all of us need to be concerned about. Look at the economic issues that plague the world today. We have problems of hunger, we have poverty, we have homelessness, we have illiteracy, we have uh, the non-availability of roads for people in far remote areas to access many of the services that are essential for them like medical care and education. There is also the problem of sanitation that uh, we can find uh, has caused health concerns for a large number of people. These are economic concerns and they can be uh, addressed with the tools of economics. Are these the only concerns that the world has today or are there other concerns? For example, we have the concern of climate change. We have the problem of ozone depletion, marine pollution, biodiversity loss, deforestation or pollution. Are these the same way as the, are these going to be solved the same way as we are looking at uh, solving the economic issues? Unfortunately, no. So the larger question that comes up is, should nations create wealth first and uh, meet the need, economic needs of the people who are uh, struggling to meet their economic needs and then wait for the economies to uh, take care of these environmental concerns. Can these uh, environmental concerns be reversed later? That's the big question. And then we can see that a question comes up in our mind, are these economies going to experience the growth in the GDP in a limitless manner? Are, uh, is growth the only concern of the economies of the world? Are they going to spend all their energies on just seeing how their economies grow? So growth has also to have a limit. And are there no other goals other than uh, economic growth and thing? So isn't uh, happiness itself a goal, for example? So now let's look at the effectiveness of mainstream economics to answer the concerns that I raised on environment. Mainstream economics main tool is that of market mechanism or price mechanism. Price is the signal to many economic activities. It acts as an incentive and acts as a disincentive. The individuals are guided by self-interest or what we call in economics the invisible hand. Individuals are considered rational who know what is right and what is wrong and take decisions which will benefit themselves. Now this uh, structure of the mainstream neoclassical economics, whether this will be able to answer the concerns of environment. Will these individuals be uh, concerned about taking care of the environment or cutting down of uh, forest or throwing polluted, uh, um, uh, releasing polluted water into the uh, water bodies because their self-interest will tell them that is the right thing to do. But environmental uh, issues will be uh, raised because these kind of activities happen. What is going to be the environment of income? The envi uh, what is the effect of this on the environment? For example, I could just, uh, uh, the example that comes to my mind is uh, what would happen to uh, a neoclassical economist thinking if we talk about the, um, the climate change. All that the neoclassical economist would say 
is that climate change offers a very good business opportunity for all those products that can be used to cool the earth example or cool the day-to-day -day lives for example the sale of fans the sale of coolers the sale of air conditioners now whether that is going to be good for the environment that's a different question altogether but neoclassical economics would not look into the concerns of the environment today we know that people are more aware of environmental issues than they were ever before they are, uh, many of them are aware that their activities has an effect on the uh, um, earth. So most uh, uh, environmental problems affect our day-to-day -day lives, but then we are not, uh, uh, it doesn't come to our consciousness because if they are hard to detect or unless it, uh, we experience it ourselves, we may not be able to uh, bring it to our consciousness. For example, um, you know, driving on a busy road and constant honking will make us conscious that this is noise pollution and it is giving us a trouble of uh, listening to this loud cacophonic noise. If we were not on the road and we were not driving and we are not conscious of it, then noise pollution does not enter into our thinking. So this, uh, many of these kind of problems go unnoticed. If our local area is uh, clean with garbage, then we do not understand that garbage can pose so much of uh, trouble to the uh, environment, to the landfill. If we are using cooking gas here, we don't understand that deforestation is taking place and that is used as fuel in some other place. So all these economic issues are such that, uh, all these environmental issues are such that we may not even uh, realize that these are affecting our day-to-day -day lives. So these problems are definitely growing and they, they are a matter of concern and we need to be uh, alarmed by the changes that are taking place. So what is the nature of this environmental problem? The environmental problems are, uh, we can categorize environmental problem into three. One is those environmental problems which are preventable, like at a household level, using of metallic uh, utensils and uh, cloth bags can help us to a large extent to uh, reduce the waste that we would have generated in the form of packing material or in the form of plastic material in which food comes from outside. The second set of uh, environmental problems are that of uh, reversible nature. For example, the polluted water that entered into the lakes can be uh, cleaned up to a certain extent by the setting up of sewage water treatment plants. Then there are problems that are irreversible, irreversible because they can never be corrected in the near future or in an imaginable foreseeable future to we will not be able to uh, uh, reclaim that position. For example, the breaking down of the granite hills for construction purposes or for laying roads. These granite hills will never again get formed in the imagination of human being in the millions of years that it takes to build these kind of resources. So we are now understanding that this massive production and consumption can lead to many of these irreversible kind of losses and that we cannot ignore them as something that will pass by. So the question that comes is, should we uh, not rethink economics? Can we continue to think economics and use economics the way we were using earlier? Or can we be more pragmatic and employ the tools of economics to solve the problems of environment? And that is where the challenges and that is where the subject has emerged. And the world has been talking about the biggest, the best, the longest, the tallest, the fastest. So these kind of superlatives that we are talking about, all of them, uh, other than the human values and so on, the material world is driven by uh, natural resources. And therefore, these goals of economics can uh, is contradictory to the goals of environment. And the, these are often contradictory to each other. And the perspectives of understanding the two uh, issues are also different. And that is how there is a new branch of study that has emerged which is called as environmental economics. It is a blending of the principles of economics with the 
uh, issues that are arising in the environment and using these principles of economics to solve those problems, prevent those problems or to understand the problems that can be corrected in the issues of relating to environment. So you can see environmental economics as a subject has emerged from this context and now let us see how can we define environmental economics. To quote Kohlstad, environmental economics is concerned primarily with the impact of the economy on the environment, the significance of the environment to the economy and the appropriate way of regulating economic activity to that balance is, so that balance is achieved between environment, economic and other social goals. Other social goals is not a part of, of mainstream economics. We are concerned with economic goals and therefore environmental economics introduces one element into our economic thinking which is understanding the social goals of uh, happiness for example. So we need to merge the principles of economics and the issues of environment and understand how is it impacting the economy. The economic activities, how is it impacting the economy? Is there, are there ways in which we can regulate these economic activities? Consumption and production, can they be regulated? Can there be regulation on the way fishing happens in the deep sea? We think about the deforestation that can be uh, prevented or the lakes that can be polluted. All these issues are needed to be regulated. Now, regulation can come by the government. Regulation can come by education. Regulation can come by awareness. Regulation can come uh, by economists as well. So that is what we are talking about. How can we find appropriate way? Can price signal be used to control these things? Can incentives and disincentives be used to control these kind of activities that happen? Can we achieve a balance between economics, um, environment and other social goals? Uh, uh, trying to balance the environment, economic and social uh, other social goals have given rise to another index of uh, uh, me measurement index which is known as the gross happiness index. So that comes from the understanding that it is not that just we need material things that makes us happy. We also feel happy when we go to a beach or when we go to uh, a, a forest or to a park or anything that like that or when we see animals or when we see plants there is a, some kind of a, a happiness that comes in and therefore we need to balance that goal along with the economic goal. So so the next, the last of this question that uh, Kohlstad raises is how to how do markets function? How can we use markets and use it for concern uh, conserving the environmental resources? So these are the four issues that environmental economics is according to Kohlstad. So these uh, four elements of uh, Kohlstad's definition amply uh, uh, signifies the fact mm -hmm. that we need to be concerned about. Uh, economic issues, we need to be concerned about uh, environmental issues and we also need to balance it with other social goals. This has emerged as a new subfield of economics which is called environmental economics. So uh, I hope you have enjoyed watching this video. This is an introductory video. I, I hope that you have uh, subscribed to this uh, the channel and uh, you will uh, click the like button and comment on this video. Thank you very much.